Finally, we will learn about homogeneous transformations. So the transformation is going to include the rotation and a translation. Chassel's theorem says the most general displacement of a rigid body is translation along an axis and rotation around the same axis. So slide, rotate. Slide in a certain direction, rotate around that direction axis. Order does not matter. So you could slide, then rotate, or rotate, then slide. Either way, you get the same result. So if we are rotating and sliding in the x direction, then the rotation around x by phi is this red element. The distance that we went in the x direction is this element. So the final homogeneous transformation matrix combines the rotation and the translation, but that would just be a three by four matrix, three rows, four columns. We have to make it a square matrix. So the bottom one is going to be zero, 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 one. So that if we multiply these in a row, then the rotations will multiply and the translations will, will be affected. So that's why we have zeros in the rotation column, one in the translation column, so that the math works out properly. So this is written as R D zero one kind of shorthand where this zero is actually three zeros. And R is in special orthogonal group three, D is in R cubed. So that is basically, they are both in three dimensional space. We use X, Y, and Z. Similarly to rotations with a transformation, then current frames post multiply and fixed frames pre multiply. The more common is current frame. So you can see here that H of one in frame zero, then H two with respect to one, then H three with respect to two, they all kind of compound. And so you end up with H three with respect to zero. So to use H, because H is a four by four, then if we want to multiply it by a certain point or a vector, since those points and vectors are only in 3D space, we need to augment them and make them four, have four elements. So points get augmented with one because we want the new position to be affected by the original position. So this D would affect where the new P is. Whereas with a vector, a vector is just a magnitude and direction. So the vector is the same no matter what point you started at. It goes out with a certain length in a certain direction relative to that point. So for that reason, we augment the vector with zero because it doesn't matter what point you started at, the vector still points in the same direction. The inverse transformation is a little bit trickier than the inverse rotation. So the rotation part, you can take its transpose just like normal. But to get the inverse of the position part, you have to do negative R transpose times original point. So H inverse is not the same as H transpose. You have to actually do this math to get the H transpose or to get the H inverse. For pure translation, R is just the identity matrix. That means X, Y, Z points in their original directions. Zeros along the main diagonal, ones in the other places. Sometimes H is called T for transformation instead of H for homogeneous. Um, so you can also write it like that. Now transformation matrices represent relative position and orientation between coordinate frames. So that's pose, position and orientation. So T B A means transformation of B with respect to frame A. So that would include the rotation and the distance that you translated relative to that original frame. They can also show passive transformation of a point or vector in a new coordinate frame. So the coordinate frame changes around the point or vector, or it can be an active transformation of a point or vector in a fixed reference frame. So either the point or the vector rotates, but the coordinate frame stays fixed. 